Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Kate Wilkinson here at the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. I'm here by myself this morning with just the video crew, but I know that I am not alone because all of you are here in spirit. Our worship services are going to continue even though we can't gather together. So please tune in every Sunday at 11 and have a candle ready at your home, wherever you're watching, so that as we light our chalice each Sunday, you can light along with us, and that way we can feel like we're really connected. Your pastoral care team and I are here throughout the week. Please do reach out to us. The best way to get in touch with me right now is through email, so feel free to email me at revkate at uumh.org. That's R-E-V-K-A-T-E at U-U-M-H dot org. I would love to hear from you. This is a really strange and challenging time that we are in. And just like you are trying to figure out what living through a pandemic means in your life, we too are trying to figure out what it means for our faith community. And even though we know that this is a serious time, we're trying to approach this with patience and creativity and a sense of humor. And I hope that you will too. It is so disappointing not to be able to gather together in person. But don't worry, your minister has a long history of faithfully leading people through their disappointments. In fact, my first job way back in high school was to work at a 17th century bakery next to Plymouth Rock. And boy, were there a lot of disappointed people there. Hello, welcome to Plymouth Rock. Oh. Yes, it is a little smaller than you thought. Yeah, it's a little small and, oh yeah, they did, it did break and they pasted it back together and, and moved it here. So I know it, it is a little disappointing. What, how far did you travel? Oh, all that way, huh? That is a long trip. Oh yeah. Well, the, you know, the clam rolls across the street are really good. So there you have it. You're in good hands here. Not to worry. We can all weather all kinds of disappointments and unknowns together. Now, we'd like to keep some of our basic format of our services intact. So let's begin with our standard opening. As we gather together in the sacred spaces of our living rooms, let us all remember to turn off our cell phones. I mean, I'm not gonna hear it if yours goes off, but I just think it would be better for you if you put your phone down for an hour. Today, I'd like to highlight a few announcements. Our first is an important announcement from our board president, Bruce de Saint Croix. Bruce? Everything is canceled. And that pretty much covers everything at the meeting house right now. Thank you, Bruce. And now I'd like to go to our friend Zoe Lewis for a public service announcement. Down in Provincetown, on the tip of the land, all the good people must wash their hands. Do it for 20 seconds with soap and water to make them clean. Cause nobody wants to catch COVID-19. Everybody say, Ca-Corona, Ca-Corona, Ca-Corona. Keep your hands clean. Each week we light our chalice as a symbol of our faith. This morning, I've invited a few friends to light a candle in their homes along with us. I hope that you will do the same. You can even pause this video now when you go get your candle and bring it back. I light this chalice here at the Unitarian Universal
Merciless Meeting House of Provincetown in solidarity with all of you watching at home. Hi everyone, it's Mary Apt and I'm lighting the candle from my home in North Turo. Wishing you light, love, and health. This is Lisa, lighting a candle in Wellfleet. This is Paul and Oliver, lighting a candle in Provincetown. Ready, Oliver? There we go. What do you think? You want to blow it out? Okay. Hi, I'm Will in Truro. And this is Ryan in Truro. And we're lighting a candle. Hi, I'm Pat. I'm lighting a candle in Provincetown. This is Shelley. This is Lucinda. And we're lighting a candle in Plainfield, Vermont. Hi, I'm Marty. And I'm Ellen. Lighting a candle in Truro. This is Tracy. I'm lighting a candle in Provincetown. This is Savannah. I'm lighting a candle in Provincetown. This is Andres, and I'm lighting a candle from Provincetown. This is Casey and I'm lighting a candle to promise now. Oh, I'm down and I'm lighting you. Our prayer this morning is by Father Richard Hendrick, entitled, Lockdown. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. They say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that dolphins are swimming in the canals of Venice. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up 
to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that, yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be the disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now. Today, breathe. Listen. Behind the factory noises of your panic, the birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. Amen. Our reading this morning will be given by Reverend Christy Hardwick. She joins us from Florida. And Christy, we hope your cold gets better soon. Reading Pandemic by Lynn Ungar. Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath the most sacred of times? Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up, just for now, on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing. Pray. Touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, Reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You can hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. 
Now is the time in our service where we usually gratefully accept your offerings for the support of this community. While we can't physically pass a basket today, I do ask that you please continue to support us financially in the coming weeks. We are committed to paying our staff and taking care of our beautiful building throughout this experience. We are also already seeing an increase in the need for our minister's discretionary fund. If you are a member, we ask that you please continue paying your pledge by sending checks made out to the UUMH to P.O. Box 817, Provincetown, Massachusetts, 02657. And if you are not a member, but you are enjoying these videos and my Minister's Minute videos during this difficult time, please consider supporting the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. You can send a check to the address I just listed, or you can follow the donate button on our website homepage, uumh.org and we thank you. A month ago, I chose the sermon title for today, The Work of Happiness. Now, pretty much everything in my world has changed since then, but this sermon title still works, so I'm keeping it. The Work of Happiness. It sounds contradictory, right? Some of us believe that happiness should not be work at all, that it should be easy, spontaneous, without effort or contrivance, but that's not really true. Some happiness does come that way, as a surprise, as a gift, but there's another kind of happiness that we work for that we choose, that we learn. I got the sermon title from the writer May Sarton. It's the title of one of her poems, The Work of Happiness. I thought of happiness, how it is woven out of the silence in the empty house each day, and how it is not sudden, and it is not given, but is creation itself, like the growth of a tree. No one has seen it happen, but inside the bark, another circle is growing in the expanding ring. No one has heard the root go deeper in the dark, but the tree is lifted by this inward work, and its plumes shine, and its leaves are glittering. So happiness is woven out of the peace of ours, and strikes its roots deep in the house alone. The old chest in the corner, cool waxed floors, white curtains softly and continually blown as the free air moves quietly about the room, a shelf of books, a table, and the whitewashed wall. These are the dear, familiar gods of home. And here, the work of faith can best be done. The growing tree is green and musical. For what is happiness but growth in peace? The timeless sense of time when furniture has stood a lifespan in a single place, and as the air moves, so the old dreams stir. The shining leaves of present happiness. No one has heard thought or listen to a mind, but where people have lived in inwardness, the air is charged with blessing 
and does bless. Windows look out on mountains, and the walls are kind. When I chose this poem a month ago, I couldn't have known that our happiness would soon need to be built within the kindness of our walls, that the dear familiar gods of home would soon be our only companions, that the work of faith would indeed be done in a kind of solitude that we're not used to. As an introvert, I am not terribly daunted by that challenge. I love the quiet time, the alone time, the reading and crafting and long walks. I could spend endless hours in my house in complete contentment if it weren't for the reason that I am now inside. The fear for my friends and family and strangers I've never even met. The worry and the prayers that they will be okay, that they won't get sick, that they will have enough food and money and resources to weather a closed down economy, that children will still learn enough have enough stimulation not to drive their parents crazy, that governments will learn how to cooperate and how to be generous and kind. I could spend all of my silence in worry, in anxiety, but that is not what we are being called to do. We are being called to carve a new normal out of this time of great unknowns. Called to source community in different ways. Called to summon our creative instincts. Called to care for one another through and beyond walls of isolation. Called to go deeper and more still than we have ever gone before. Called to entertain ourselves and be patient with ourselves and love ourselves. We are being called to the work of happiness. My colleague, Reverend Kendall Gibbons, wrote this the other day. Once upon a time, the season of Lent was about necessity. It was about the time of year when the stored harvest was pretty well used up before anything much was growing in the early spring. It was a time of want, of hardship. A time, perhaps, of temptation when you might want to eat the grain that was stored for seed or the animals that would soon give birth to the next generation. It was a time of self-restraint when it was better for the community as a whole if the rich and privileged did not indulge themselves when the poor could not. It was a time of recognizing the connection between human behavior and the creative, generative forces of the earth and the universe that could only function in cooperation of acknowledging the interdependent web of all existence and what it required from us in order for abundance to happen again in time. Lent didn't start out as sacrificing an arbitrary pleasure. It started out as a reverent acknowledgement of sacred necessity, 
of the role played by self-restraint in the service of both the common good and the web of life. I invite you into that consciousness, Kendall says, for the next several weeks or months, however long it takes to ride out this wave of disease. I invite you to share the spiritual challenge of maintaining our connection to one another and to the ideals that we share even while we are forbidden to touch. We are sacrificing something that is profoundly good and that we deeply want and enjoy and depend on in the service of a larger purpose so that our community may live and thrive over the long term. And we are, I promise you, doing this together. Such beautiful words, Kendall. Thank you. And such a powerful reframing of this strange time that we are in. The season of Lent, the season of pandemic, the season of deep sacrifice and deep service to the larger good, the season of distancing and of interconnection. I read somewhere this week that China sent medical masks to Italy and wrote on the boxes a quote from a Roman poet. We are waves from the same sea. And that Japan had donated supplies to China and wrote on the boxes a quote of a Chinese poem. We have different mountains and rivers, but we share the same sun, moon, and sky. If I were going to send you a box right now, I would write on the side a poem by Laura Kelly Finucci. I'd probably have to use all the sides of the box. She says, when this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, a Friday night out, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath. A boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be. We hoped to be. And may we stay that way, better for each other because of the worst. My dears, when this is over, I am going to give each of you the biggest hug in the world. And I am going to be so grateful to see each of your faces. And we are gonna have one hell of a party to celebrate all the things that we are newly grateful for, that we had mistakenly begun to take for granted. But that party is not going to be for a very long time. So in the meantime, 
I invite you to find something each day that you are grateful for. I invite you to reach out to me, to each other, to someone who might be struggling. I invite you to reach out all your tendrils of compassion. I invite you to grow slowly like the rings of a tree. I invite you to be patient with yourselves and your loved ones and the state of the world. I invite you to the work of happiness. And we are, I promise you, doing this together. Take good care. Amen. And blessed be. Everything is cancelled! Little video on do testing, testing. Testing, testing. Welcome to Plymouth Rock. It's smaller than you thought. Yeah, that's disappointing. <laughs> okay. I'm Shelly. And I'm Lucinda.